Hi, I'm Martin, this is Not Enough Tech. Have you ever had this uh, feeling that uh, you left a home and you're not sure whether you locked the house or not? Well, if there is only a way to check. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have a smart lock. However, I've got something else. Hey Google! Is the door locked? Door is unlocked. Uh, I guess I'm coming back then. But what if you have an Amazon Echo instead? Would that work? Let's find out. Hey Alexa, is my door locked? Checking. Hang on. The door is unlocked. Definitely coming back. See you in a minute. And I'm back. You don't have to have a smart lock to achieve the functionality like this. You can easily achieve that for about 15 to 20 dollars depending on where you shop. All you need is three items, two door sensors and one magnet. And I'll show you how to achieve this. I got inspired after reviewing Benek Smart uh, Zigbee set, so I would strongly recommend you to actually go for Zigbee devices because they are very power efficient and a modification like that, you probably don't want to change the batteries very often. Before we jump into the tutorial, let's talk about features. I've mentioned the smart speaker functionality, so you can use Google and Amazon devices to query the status of the door. This isn't a smart lock, so you won't be able to lock it and unlock it on request, but getting a status, it's a, val a valid and important information for your home automation setup. You will also receive a bed night notification if you left your door unlocked. So you can use your Google and Amazon device to get that notification when you left the door unlocked just to drag you out from bed and make your evening really, really unpleasant. Lastly, let's talk about Android notifications. You'll be able to notify any number of Android devices with the custom timeouts. This means that you can set a different timeout for a door being left open and the door being left unlocked. That way you can nip out uh, to a car, grab your shopping and leave the door open behind without getting that bothersome messages. If you don't want to use time-based notifications, you can also use Tasker with Wi-Fi or geofencing to get the notification as soon as you leave the household. Right now, my smart door is much smarter than your smart door. But if you follow this tutorial, you're gonna increase the IQ of your door by a couple of points. So let's get started.
have to say that the result is quite neat. Now I'm anticipating probably two inquiries in regards to this. First of all it's going to be a battery life because it's a bit of a hassle to unscrew a couple of screws and replace the battery. The whole thing will take about five to ten minutes and to be honest because the battery on Zigbee devices lasts about six months I'm not that bothered. The second thing that some of you might point out is that drilling into the bolt itself might weaken the bolt and it's probably true to a degree, however, the way the bolt it braces itself against that plate, uh, it does that uh, not in a place that I was drilling, so I don't think that has much of an impact, and with additional security bolts that uh, pop out at the top of the door and at the bottom of the door, I'm not concerned. It's much more risky to leave your door unlocked. I've used Benex Smart Door Sensors to create my smart door. The door sensors are quite small and that gave me kind of idea that they probably would fit in uh, the door frame. Now I've used these in particular devices and I've linked them in the description of this video. But if you want to use any other sensors that's fine as long as you can bring them to no dread. Because these sensors weren't available on Zigbee 2 MQTT device list, I have to add them manually. So what you have to do really is just to go and edit the device GS file and this is the file, uh, this is the entry that you have to add to make them compatible. Now if you used a different door sensor and you need to add it because it's not available on Zigbee 2 MQTT, you have to do is just go to my tutorial, read about adding new devices to Zigbee to MQTT and hopefully you'll be able to add these. Now if your device are already on the list all you have to do is obviously just power it and bring it over to Node-RED and I have tutorial linked for you as well. There is a couple of different things I'm going to use with Node-RED as well. First of all there is a Nora which is a replacement for Google Assistant and uh, also I have uh, uh, Alexa Home School which will work in the same way. I've used the uh, uh, Cast 2 and Alexa Remote 2 to uh, make both home speakers speak in the evening and the messages to Android are handled by Join App. I have tutorials linked uh, for the relevant um, notes in my articles. I would strongly recommend you if you want to know more details to jump into article and read on those. So this is the node red part. Let's take a look first at the config. In config you can enter the number of minutes that uh, your timeout is gonna last. You have a separate timeout for door and separate for uh, lock and I would strongly suggest you that the door, door timeout is bigger than the lock timeout. Once you set that and deployed, just simply submit the payload and you will receive the confirmation that your time timeout has been set. As you can see it's in milliseconds and it's been set in here. Information about the contact, whether the contact is closed or open, is being submitted via Zigbee to MQTT. So that's going to be reporting basically as a payload. Uh, so I have a message payload.contact, this is where the value is stored and you can see I'm translating this into a status in my context as well. This is a flow context. Based on the information or changes in the information, uh, I, I'm going to save this. So I've used those two uh, function nodes to save the information about my uh, contact. Uh, so I save the battery levels, I send the time the contact has been open and closed in case I want to use it, and obviously the state of the contact itself. I do that separately for every um, device, so one for the door and one for the lock. Now based whether I'm going to open or close uh, these contacts, I'm going to set the timers and timeouts. So the moment I'm opening uh, the door, uh, I'll set the alarm which is basically presented in a flow variable in here and this alarm is checked every 10 seconds uh, using this function node which basically checks if the alarm is uh, set and if the alarm is set and if the, it's time to issue an alarm it sends a push notification using join to one of my devices uh, letting me know what just happened. Now the system is smart enough to figure out that if you have a door open, it's not going to notify about lock being unlocked because this is assumed and uh, it has one more bypass in him which is uh, in here. So when you actually send um, notification to your phone, uh, you will receive, this is the only moment you will receive that your door has been locked. So you don't get uh, notifications on your phone, unnecessary notifications if you close the door. That's the intended behavior because I don't want to bother my phone when I'm did lock the door. I only want to get a notification update when the door was 
not locked and when that st status changed because someone else has locked the door. Now I also had a bedtime alarms and for bedtime alarms I just use the fixed timer at 7 o'clock every day. Um, I'm going to uh, check uh, both uh, whether um, the, the lock and the door is locked and based on that information I'm just going to send that uh, to a Google device using um, Cast2 or I can send that to Amazon Echo device using Alexa Remote 2 uh, just notifying me that I have to get up and secure the door. So that's, that's how this works. And lastly, if you want to query the device, there is a small limitation. Those devices are listed both as locks, so smart locks. And smart locks only have uh, two states, so they will only monitor whether the door is locked or unlocked. Now this My System allows you to trace whether the door is open and uh, closed as well, which isn't compatible. So I had to write a function note that will check whether the door is uh, closed and lock and that's going to be the door lock and loaded and secure or if any of them whether the door is unlocked left unlock or left open that means the door is not secure and the device will responding uh, that the, uh, your door isn't locked so this is something to bear in mind now uh, submitting uh, information to google home system i'm using nora and all you have to do is submit true or false which is very easy uh, in regards to the uh, amazon echo responses then uh, you have to use uh, selected response you cannot use the auto acknowledge so you have to uh, compose your response and then submit it back that way and when asking um, amazon echo for help you'll get the correct response and that's pretty much how it works if you don't want the time-based updates you can also trigger updates based on your geofencing or wi-fi disconnected using tasker uh, the way you would do it is just to send the http request to your node red server and then obtain the information from this um, server about the door and lock status and submit that as your response and then compose the message on your Android device. All right, it looks like I'll never leave my house unlocked again, which is awesome. Now, if you want to do the same, in the description of this video, there is a link to article, which contains a little bit more details about it and all the files that you need to download to have it running on your red. So do check it out before you ask any questions. As for now guys, you probably know that I do not have a posting schedule, so if you're interested in any of my content, not just videos, because I do more than just YouTube videos, uh, follow me on social media because this is the great way to get in touch. As for now, I'm going to say bye and I gotta see you in the next video, so take care, bye! I'm about to go but Postman is coming and something tells me he has a parcel for me. He did not.